You're watching Tom and Space. This is episode one of a new series where I'll be focusing on spaceflight. I'll be discussing past, present, and future space programs, vehicles, and operations. Everything from Yuri Gagarin's first flight to NASA's Mars rover Perseverance, which by the way, is set to touch down on the red planet in 126 days. But for today's episode, I'd like to focus on the SpaceX road to reusability. Between 2006 and 2009, SpaceX completed a total of five flights of their Falcon 1 rocket, but only two were successful. The rocket was initially designed to be partially reusable and was equipped with parachutes for recovery. However, the SpaceX team found that the Falcon 1 was being torn apart when it hit the upper parts of the atmosphere on re-entry. By 2011, SpaceX had announced a new test vehicle, which would be their next step towards reusability the grasshopper. This humble testbed would be fundamental to the realization of the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets we see performing missions today. Standing at 32 meters, the vehicle was essentially the first stage tank of a Falcon 9 version 1.0 with a single Merlin 1D engine along with some rudimentary landing gear and avionics. With the first hop reaching only two and a half meters, they flew progressively higher and higher until the grasshopper reached its career's apogee at 744 meters. Through eight successful flights, SpaceX had used the grasshopper campaign to learn how to accurately maneuver in flight and perform a propulsive landing. But in 2013, the grasshopper program came to a close and it was time for the next development phase, the F9R. The Falcon 9 reusable development vehicle was not only a larger, more capable rocket, but it was the first prototype to receive retractable landing legs, with grid fins to come at a later date. With three engines rather than one, it could fly higher and faster than the Grasshopper, and it was constructed out of the first stage tank of the Falcon 9 version 1.1, so it was much taller too, standing at 48.7 meters. For those of you playing at home, the Arc de Triomphe in Paris is about a meter shorter than the F9R, or if you prefer another metric, the F9R was about 369 bananas tall. On August 22, 2014, during the fifth flight of the rocket, a blocked sensor caused an anomaly and the vehicle triggered a rapid unscheduled disassembly. From this point, SpaceX would no longer practice their vertical landings in a paddock in Texas. Instead, they'd do it on their commercial missions. Every Falcon 9 first stage performing customer missions going forward would be instrumented and equipped as a descent test vehicle. Test, fly, repeat. SpaceX tried again and again with numerous landing attempts on their autonomous spaceport drone ships out in the Atlantic Ocean. Each time getting just that little bit closer to not exploding. glorious. Eventually it was time to try a touchdown on land and on December 21st 2015 Falcon 9 booster 1019 became the first orbital class rocket to perform a successful landing during the Orbcom 2 mission. From Falcon 1 to the Falcon 9 many insanely difficult engineering challenges were overcome by SpaceX certainly too many to mention in this video. The SpaceX road to reusability was paved with some incredible milestones. At the time of recording this video, SpaceX has flown two boosters up to six times, and we're even seeing them catch fairings for reuse on other missions. Since their inception in 2002, they've been steadily working towards reusable rockets with the ultimate goal of making life multiplanetary and sending people to Mars. And if you found this channel, then you probably know that in Boca Chica, Texas, SpaceX is already building Starship, a spaceship that could one day take humans to Mars. This thing will be massive. With the super heavy booster as the first stage, the system will have roughly twice the thrust of a Saturn V at liftoff, and the system is designed to be completely reusable. 
With a payload to orbit of 100 tons, if it works, the Starship will be game changing. But Starship aside for now, we're seeing so many exciting developments in spaceflight. We've got NASA's upcoming Artemis missions, which aim to take us back to the moon. We've got the commercial crew program with SpaceX and Boeing. We've got rocket startups. We've got Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic sending people into space soon. Maybe. I'm hoping to cover many topics related to spaceflight in this series, but what are you most excited about happening in space? Let me know in the comments. That's it for this episode. Please join me for future episodes by subscribing to the channel. And thanks for watching, and I will see you next orbit.